Welcome. We are the Ohio University Body Area Network team, and this is our entry for the 2015 IEEE Antenna and Propagation Society Student Design Contest, Antenna for Body Area Network. Our faculty lead is Dr. Chris Bartone. I'm Trevor Vogelhuber. I'm Levi Moore. I'm Pat Hanlon. I'm Morgan Haggerty. And I'm Gordon Fleming, and I'm going to be the test subject today. Our system is comprised of four major components. First, data acquisition through several sensors. Next, data analysis with a microcontroller unit, which then uses our custom Bluetooth antenna to transmit to a custom-made Android application. To get into the data acquisition, we had three major sensors. First, the Polar T31 coated chest strap. This is the bottom strap on Gordon's chest. This communicates over the five gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency to a Polar heart rate monitor interface board attached to the microcontroller. Next, we have a digital thermometer attached to the microcontroller, which reads the ambient temperature. Finally, we use an inertial measurement unit to detect if a fall has occurred. All this sensor data is fed into our microcontroller, the Arduino Uno R3. This is done over two different communication buses. One, the I2C bus, in which the heart rate monitor and the accelerometer are fed into. Second, is the digital interface on the Arduino board. This is where the temperature is fed in. All this data is then fed and packaged through the microcontroller into the NRF 8001 made by Nordic Semiconductor, where it's packaged and sent out with a Bluetooth low energy to our custom Bluetooth antenna. We tested many antenna designs using computational electromagnetic modeling software, FICO and CST. Our decision was to choose an inset fed patch antenna. The Android application was developed using Android Studio and programmed on the Nexus 5. Our custom built Android app receives signals via the antenna and displays the signals on our application. On our body area network application, we enabled the Bluetooth low energy capability of our Nexus 5. This allowed us to use significantly less energy compared to Bluetooth 2.0. Next, we would like to demonstrate the operation of our system. There will be four test scenarios. The first test scenario, Gordon will hold the phone one meter in front of his body to test the power received via the RSSI message. The second scenario, Gordon will put the phone in his front pocket, again to test the power received via the RSSI message. The third test will be similar to the first two, except the phone will be placed in the rear pocket. Throughout these first three scenarios, temperature and heart rate will constantly be updating. You'll be able to see this on the screen. The final scenario will be to test for fall detection. Gordon won't actually be falling in this anechoic chamber tonight. However, he will produce a rapid change in acceleration by jumping up and down, which will then be detected by inertial measurement unit. This will send a signal to the phone and fall detected will be displayed. Now that the rest of my team has left the anechoic chamber, I'm gonna move forward with the testing. The first test is testing one meter in front of me and locking in these RSSI from that distance. After that, I'll go ahead and show you on the screen. The RSSI read is negative 35 dBm. The next test we're going to do is having the phone in my front pocket, clicking scan, locking in the RSSI message, and displaying it to you again. The RSSI message here is negative 57 dBm. The third test we're going to do is holding the phone in my back pocket, locking in the RSSI, and reading it back to you. The RSSI message from here is negative 82 dBm. Now that the device is actually connected, we're going to go ahead and read the continuous tests, which are the temperature, which is measured in Celsius, and the heart rate, which is measured in BPM. The temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, and the beats per minute is 106, and that changes quite frequently. The final test is impact detection. I'm not going to fall in this anechoic chamber, but we can simulate this by me jumping up and down. We've recorded this in a list format, so it records the time of fall and number of falls. This concludes all of our sensor testing and RSSI testing for the competition. Thank you.